fantastic. Everybody is still holding on quite a bit. That's good. Uh, has been a great day. Um, and um, the few minutes, I'll present about six, seven, eight. Uh, cut it down, and uh, we get uh, the third fellow. I really want to hear from the fellows. We uh, encourage quite a bit, but didn't get much odd response. And you know why? All fellows are very busy. That is the problem. And uh, we already had two fellows, those who presented. Next year, probably we'll have three. And the cath lab staff, nurse practitioners and so, is tremendous. We actually have, at present, five nurse practitioners involved in the structural program uh, at Sinai. And uh, once we get approval for the functional MR, you can imagine what will happen further. Two people, particularly Jin, uh, Hai Kang, and Anil Shah. Those are the two main NPs in the structural heart. They really manage patients today. And the cath lab staff of Mount Sinai particularly, uh, with the first case uh, lab breaking down and uh, rapidly going to other room, uh, was really, I'm thankful, along with, the, of course, my colleague and the international fellows. With that note, I briefly just uh, give some idea about the alcohol septal ablation uh, for patients with HOCM. We know the background. Uh, this is the condition, uh, which basically represents hypertrophy of intravascular septum. It has to be 12 millimeter minimum. Of course, could be up to 35, 40, but usual about 18 to 20. And uh, there is a systolic anterior motion of the mitral valve, which caused the dynamic reduction uh, and LV flow outflow obstruction in one third. Uh, occurs in 0.2% of general population, and uh, this is an autosomal dominant trait. So anytime you have a patient with HOCM, make sure other family members, the kids, uh, have already been is screened. And it probably is the number one cause of sudden cardiac death in young athlete uh, and uh, more common in, women, in men, women likely to be disabled. So basically what is happening here, this is your septal bulge, and it pulls the, by venturi effect, the anterior mitral leaflet, causing se septal hyper systolic anterior motion uh, and uh, causing obstruction in about 30% of cases. There is clearly a morphological feature uh, which correlate on MRI, uh, having a 20% fibrosis and so sudden death, so patient asymptomatic, particularly young, recommendation, there is a whole uh, algorithm that who should get a defibrillator, uh, even they're asymptomatic. So clinical manifestations, usually asymptomatic, and of course, uh, some patients do become symptomatic because of high LVEDP, and pre-syncope, syncope, fatigue, chest pain occurs, and of course, I mentioned many of them could have, or rarely could have sudden cardiac death. Uh, obstruction is the trouble. So once you have high obstruction, and that's where the various algorithms come in, that uh, higher the outflow obstruction, young age, and myocardial fibrosis, those patients uh, get the consult by the specialist, I would say, uh, HOCM, and then go the track down for uh, the it defibrillator. Um, and uh, this is basically overall survival of the patients uh, based on uh, the, when they present, young age or old age, clearly the younger age is the more troublesome. Uh, this is a pathophysiology, uh, hemodynamic particularly, which uh, leads to classical Barkundro brown world phenomena. That, that post-PVC, you see the increase in gradient and decrease in pulse pressure because of in augmented left ventral outflow tract and causing construction and no output uh, thereafter. Uh, of course, Valsalva can be used also, Valsalva procedure. Uh, then the LVOT obstruction and symptoms of various kinds, as mentioned uh, here, mitral regurgitation, atrial fibrillation, pulmonary hypertension, low cardiac output, and uh, syncope, uh, once they become symptomatic are usual, and of course many of them have chest pain also, uh, despite normal coronary arteries. So there have been a various algorithms that how do you work these patients who present uh, clearly hyper, most important, particularly young age, is that you have to risk a stratify for ICD primary or secondary in all patients. And that goes the algorithm of uh, doing a cardiac MRI, looking at the age group of patients, the family history, the thickness of the septum, and getting ICD. Then it starts when the symptoms of heart failure occurs or don't occur. If none, there is usually no medical therapy. You continue if there is hypertension, 
little uh, heart failure, little diuretic. Um, and the, once they have severe and medical therapy is there, then comes to go to the next level, that is surgical myomectomy or alcohol septal ablation. So just want to emphasize asymptomatic HOCM, we don't do anything. It is symptomatic, on medical therapy, refractory, continued symptoms, that decision is made uh, for further invasive testing and make a decision that who should get myomectomy or uh, the alcohol septal ablation. Now, clearly, that treatment is surgical myomectomy. The alcohol septal ablation all traditionally has been patients who are not a surgical candidate. Uh, and this is, uh, how does uh, this all happen? That uh, by giving or doing the alcohol septal ablation, you decrease the septal thickness and you improve, increase the left ventricle outflow tract by reducing the systolic anterior motion. Also that whatever septal thickness you do at time zero by causing the infarction, it continues to thin out for next six months. So benefit of septal ablation you really see in about six months with decreasing obstruction and of course uh, in some cases decreasing mitral regurgitation, decreased pulmonary artery pressure with symptomatic improvement and so. Uh, and these are the, hemo, the hemodynamic tracing, so LVOT, uh, during rest, exercise, and so. The, as I mentioned, the reduction of the septal thickness over, over the years, even after you had done the infarction, only at time zero uh, continues. And of course, it follows with the decrease in the gradient, uh, what is left. Technique, we actually, uh, I would advise you to go to our, uh, this uh, July, uh, structural heart webcast, uh, Dr. Moreno actually was, was a moderator, uh, this case of uh, septal ablation, and we go through all the techniques. For many of them who are fellows here or uh, want to do this procedure, that we have put that in a clear technique point of view, uh, what to do, how to follow these patients, and their subsequent monitoring. Uh, these are the various steps. Uh, they, what about the complications? So every patient will ask. Uh, overall, in hospital mortality is less than 1%. And uh, from short-term point of view, data are similar to surgical myomectomy, mortality about 1% in various reported series. The heart block, that is one of the big issues, it still continues with the septal ablation, of course, with the surgery also, but much more uh, with the alcohol septal ablation. Overall, by and large, in a large series of cases, it's been anywhere between 12 to 15%. So 12 to 15% patients will develop complete heart block and therefore, we mandate that you leave a pacemaker, temporary pacemaker in these patients for minimum 48 hours. Sometimes the, uh, the heart block can develop after 24 hours. So, and we actually have had three patients in the last 10 years at Sinai where the complete heart block developed after removal of the pacemaker next day and patient got into trouble. Uh, so clearly, uh, pro our protocol, leave it for 48 hours uh, for these patients, and of course they don't improve, uh, and uh, the, those patients then get to uh, uh, the permanent pacemaker. The predictors, clearly that you have left bundle branch block. If you have left bundle, very high incidence, odd ratio, you have 39, as you can see. The, also we learn that you have how fast you are injecting the alcohol. So very slow alcohol injection, uh, direct, uh, decreases the chance of uh, development of permanent pacemaker. And so, uh, and uh, now there are many other, many studies uh, have compared these two techniques. This is one of the very early in terms of hemodynamics. And so, uh, the, what you get with the surgery, uh, you don't get with the, the alcohol septal ablation. You decrease the gradient, as you can see, uh, from 60, br bring down to about 20, 25. Uh, but we know with the myomectomy, you'll bring it down to two or five in single digits and so. Um, Meta-analysis of septal ablation versus myomectomy in hypertrophic uh, uh, cardiomyopathy, and they actually have put together, uh, published in uh, JAK, that various points, uh, except no difference in many of them, but higher need for pacemaker, higher residual gradient after ablation, so ch choice of treatment should be made through a discussion with the procedure with the individual patient, and particularly older patients and so. Survival, it, it seems to be actually once you have done uh, ec, the, these procedures in selected patients, uh, both myomectin and ablation seems to be uh, quite well, quite good. And of course, these are the many studies which are being presented in this uh, field. So 
the decision tree for patients with obstructive what we do after your patient medical therapy resistant then you go for surgical necessity mitral valve pathology three vessel disease and particularly patients mitral regurgitation severe mr in my opinion those cases don't respond to uh, hocm so those cases should go for surgery and of course uh, the question always is that patient who are not fit for surgery uh, are the one like we use we offer the this procedure of uh, alcohol septal ablation uh, the patient particularly that who have prior myomectomy or uh, has uh, other pre existing uh, uh, medical conditions the so a lot of data as i mentioned uh, about uh, the survival and comparative survival of these two uh, the techniques have been presented in the literature so overall it is no randomized trial there has been no randomized trial it is only the registry data which actually have compared uh, the selected cases with the equal survival what has shown is that alcohol septal ablation uh, for elderly septal bulge right bundle branch block and previous cardiac surgery and you have to be very expert in the procedure and surgical myomectomy which is the gold standard remains in patients with young age with a left bundle because there you are going to have chance of permanent pacemaker particularly young person is is is, is uh, will happen so it should not be recommended and of course patient with the low operative risk so this is just to sum up what we see once we do the alcohol septal ablation patient stays about 3 to 4 days pacemaker higher surgical myomectomy little double in terms of the hospital stay but pacemaker rate is one third procedure mortality both are about equal available follow up we know for myomectomy is long we have only 7 8 years or maybe now 10 years for septal ablation and if we avoid doing septal ablation in too thick septum so anything about 25 or 26 mm uh, should not be done because massive necrosis cause the edema and Uh, we actually lost a patient long time ago and the, that patient septal patient cirrhotic patient declined by surgery and did a patient develop ventricular storm uh, and of course uh, treatment of choice for elderly comorbid conditions with no significant mr myomectomy young with no morb comorbidities and other valve disease and cad so there are other techniques also for septal ablation coil embolization radio frequency ablation cryo ablation cover distent in the led over the septal so basically you created a excluded the vessel and then of course mitral clip people have done in patient with only modest septal hypertrophy so avoid particularly you are treating basically the regurgitation so there are some techniques and now septal ablation is being done also as a part in patient with aortic stenosis with the tower with the septal bulge so we published that our uh, patient series of uh, 10 patients so who are real septal hypertrophy and you are worry about the valve popping out so septal ablation wait for one month and then do the tower and also septal ablation being done uh, some of those cases with the tmvr to decrease that uh, neo lvot obstruction uh, our experience here uh, for 254 cases so far and uh, this is basically the usual uh, happens uh, with the pre and post post production post uh, pvc potentiation alcohol septal is about 2.5 cc ck elevation is quite high and we wait for mb to go down to uh, less than 10 times of baseline so usually it's about 80 so less than 80 mb when goes down otherwise you wait for mb is to come down maybe will many many days but once it goes down to less than uh, 10 times we let the patient go pacemaker 10 one patient as i mentioned this was the patient with the refractory uh, vt and so five year need for re septal ablation they actually some cases have been reported in the literature about 7 to 6 5 to 7% and so the same way uh, us one patient went for surgical myomectomy but uh, about 5% need for reintervention so this was a nice uh, key uh, you know central figure puts all these things messages together treatment of these patients with the septal ablation uh, in terms of uh, medical therapy need for uh, icd then appropriate case for alcohol septal ablation and the myomectomy and thank you very much